approached over uh, the last year or two a number of times by people who've said to me, so what will happen to the National Party uh, when John Key, when John Key leaves? And I said to them, it's pretty simple. What will happen is that uh, when he's ready to resign, uh, the National Party will get together. I'm sure there'll be a robust kind of conversation about who should be the next leader. Uh, then we'll select that leader and we'll all get on with it and we'll carry on um, in the same strong way that we had before. Well, Mr Speaker, at the end of last year, my little prophecy came true. That was exactly what happened. Uh, we had a transition of leadership from one, I think, uh, who was a very, very good leader to another one who is a very, very good leader and will prove himself to be yet another good long-term Prime Minister Thanks, for New Zealand. The second reason, Mr Speaker, that I'm upbeat about the future of New Zealand under this government is that this government is continuing to use applied and creative thinking to solve some of the issues that are tough nuts to crack in modern society. This is a government that is prepared to explore new models for social housing rather than simply saying because something was tried in the 1940s and 50s, uh, that is the only thing that can ever be done and that's what we need to keep going back to doing. There's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a theme happening where, where it's back to the future and using things from the past to solve new problems. Mr Speaker, this is a government which is using applied and creative thinking through social investment strategy, through special housing areas and other things to combat the issues that we're facing in New Zealand in order to give us a better and more stable long-term future. Mr Speaker, I'm confident for the future of New Zealand under this government uh, because this is a government that is prepared to face up to the challenges facing regional New Zealand and is aspirational for our New Zealand towns and, and, uh, and regional areas. And so we've seen uh, regional uh, economic growth action plans put in places for Northland, for Waikato, for Bay of Plenty, for Gisborne, for Hawke's Bay, Taranaki, Manawatu, Whanganui, um, Canterbury, West Coast and Southland. The regions of New Zealand now um, across the board have got action plans in place based on their strengths, based on the things that they're good at, that they can be even better at so that they will continue to prosper for the people of New Zealand. Because growth, Mr Speaker, means jobs. Jobs means a path out of poverty. And this government will not shy away from looking at ways that we can create jobs for those people to build themselves a better future. Mr Speaker, the other reason that I am upbeat about the future of New Zealand under this government is that uh, having been here for having an eight-year history of strong, stable government, there is still no shortage of ideas for us to go forward. This is a government, Mr Speaker, uh, which continues to churn out policies and initiatives that will benefit everyone in New Zealand um, uh, with ambitious goals for them. Mr Speaker, in the environmental sector, we're setting goals to be predator fee by 2050. Mr Speaker, this week there's been an announcement that we will have more police. There will be more jobs. There will be better outcomes for those who are at risk under our social investment strategy. There will be better and justice for victims. Mr Speaker, there will be a short wait times for medical interventions and uh, there will be better connectivity through ultra-fibre connections throughout New Zealand. Mr Speaker, this is stuff that's just churning out even now. This stuff has been going on for eight years and yet there are more ideas. This, Mr Speaker, is a confident government. This is, as we go into an election year, an opportunity for New Zealanders to say, hey, guess what? We're on a good path. This is a, a government which has shown that it can transition leadership well. It has got great goals and aspirations for the rest of New Zealand. And I know, Mr Speaker, that under this Prime Minister, uh, as we've heard through his uh, announcement yesterday, through his um, opening speech for the year in Parliament, has set out a really good path forward for New Zealand, a good path forward that will benefit all of us, Mr Speaker, and I feel very confident that New Zealand is in good hands, and as I say, when I leave Parliament in September, under this government, New Zealand has still got a great future, even without me here. <laughs>